the ninth day of Nesmus, Ness Maker gave to me uh, music via MIDI. A uh, little inside humor for those musicians out there. Today we're going to look at how to create music and get it into our Nest Maker game. We are going to do a very, very light look at how to create music in uh, Fami Tracker. Um, I recommend you guys check out Fami Studio, which comes with Nest Maker. It's very cool. I'm a little bit more comfortable at this point with Fami Tracker just because I've used it for a longer period of time. But Fami Studio is actually where we want to be. Um, there are great tutorials about that as well. I'm just going to muscle through what we've already shown with Fami Tracker for now. We'll get to a, a whole Fami Studio its own video video later because this isn't just about I'm much faster at working in family tracker right now and this is much more about how to get a song that you create into nest maker and then we're going to just stop right there we're going to import something that's already uh, created with song and sound effects and we're going to apply it to the game so we're not going to spend too much time on the creation part of it I just want to kind of show it to you guys I'm going to be using this MIDI controller right here these are really inexpensive you can find like a $30 MIDI controller um, and that's going to be fine if it can hook it up to USB. If you don't know what MIDI is, that's okay. Um, there's a certain protocol that a lot of software has been using since like the 70s uh, that, that uh, sort of is a universal language that music can see as far as note values and lengths and things like that. Um, and it could cause a, uh, one keyboard can interact with another um, synthesizer and things like that. Um, and it's I've been doing MIDI, sampling, uh, MIDI, MIDI sequencing and sampling since I was... Uh, I don't know, 11 years old with an N-Sonic TS-12. So I go way back with this kind of stuff. Um, we're not actually, Nestmaker doesn't actually read MIDI. In fact, the Nest, uh, they weren't really using those protocols at the time. Um, but we can use a MIDI keyboard at least to get notes into the software, which is great because otherwise I have to thumb on my computer keyboard, which feels awkward to me. You can also do that. Uh, for me, I like actually playing it here on my keyboard. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to open up Family Tracker. You can actually download Family Tracker. It's a it's a free software. It's awesome. Um, been using it for a while. This is Family Tracker. And even if if you're used to looking at music, this is weird and makes no sense. It looks like a spreadsheet. Don't freak out. We're going to go through it. What I did was I went and I went to configuration, went to MIDI, and I set up my input device to be my MIDI controller. Um, and so now I can actually receive note values from that. But I don't have any, uh, if you watch, if I were to start, I'm gonna hit the record button. I'm just gonna hit a bunch of notes. You can see it hit a bunch of notes. I just da, 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 down the notes. And you see it added them, but I don't have any instruments. So it didn't really do anything. It didn't make any sound. I'm gonna undo all that. And I'm gonna turn this toggle edit mode off. So now if I hit notes, uh, it's actually playing those notes, um, but I'm not seeing anything being recorded. But let me make an instrument, you'll actually be able to hear it. So I'm gonna go to this button where it says, add an instrument. <clears throat> I'm gonna make it just an instrument called Simple Drum. And I'm gonna double click on Simple Drum. Simple, with an L. Um, don't put spaces or numbers, uh, in the especially in the beginning of your uh, instrument names or your song names or anything like that. Keep it alphanumeric um, and don't put no, definitely do not put numbers at the beginning of the file names. That'll cause all kinds of issues. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna double click on Simple Drum. And a drum, <clears throat> if you ever think about how a drum actually sounds, it hits really hard and then it decays really fast. And that's how we get a basic drum sound, a kick drum, a snare drum, a tom. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I need to create a volume envelope for this and I'm going to give it a few steps. And I'm going to make the first step pretty high, second step pretty high, third step a lot lower, and the fourth step is going to be all the way down. Now, this is going to be a really sharp attack. And I can hear it if I go. Okay, it's a very sharp attack. Now, I can also play that on my MIDI keyboard. And you can see it's actually playing on here. All right? So um, I'm not going to worry about arpeggio, pitch, high pitch, duty noise. I'm not going to worry about any of that stuff. I'm going to close this. Now I've got an instrument for a simple drum. If I come over to my noise channel and I click so I'm on my noise channel, now I get noise. So this is a, makes for a really good kind of drum. So there's a kick, there's a snare, kind of a hi-hat, so I can go. You got a groove on that. Okay, so let's just say I wanted to do something like that. I'm going to put it in record mode. 
And now I can actually play the note. Oops. Right. And let's see. here so I'm gonna copy that I'm gonna select it I'm gonna hit control C come here to this next frame here control V control V control V on the beginning of every note now I've got a little drum beat So now I've got like the beginning of a song and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another instrument and I'm going to call this bass and I'm going to make a triangle bass. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the next empty slot for volume. I'm going to give this, this is just going to be a note that holds, but I'm not going to put it on my noise channel. I'm going to put it on my triangle channel. So now oops, I'm going to put it on my triangle channel. So now I'm going to turn off my toggle edit mode so now I can kind of go down and just start laying in Now I got a little groove going. So I'm going to copy that. And I'll play that, copy that, and paste it down here. And now I got. Fine. So now I'm going to add another instrument. And I'm going to call this one melody. And I'm going to open it up. And now I'm going to actually, oops, sorry. Let me do that. I'm going to open that up. Now I'm going to go to volume. I'm going to select my next empty slot I want volume I also want duty and noise so what I'm going to do for duty and noise is I'm going to just make it one and if you listen to duty noise oops let me uh, turn this off here so if I listen to this um, and I put it on one of my pulse channels versus it's kind of a rounder sound kind of a brassier sound really tinny sound so I'm going to use this one for my melody. Okay. So I'm going to use that for my melody. I'm also going to give it a lot of volume steps. So I'm going to have it sort of decrease like that. You can kind of see what the wave is actually doing. You can see that, or the envelope is actually doing. You can see the volume is hitting and then decreasing in volume. So I'm going to stick with that. And here in my melody, I will start laying in something that will kind of work with what I'm doing. I'm not even thinking about this, honestly. So let me just, let's see. this I didn't really like that so I like this beginning but then I've got to sort of get into that major kind of feel here so now I've got a little mel little melodic thing here going on and I could get more creative with this if I wanted to. I'm just trying to do something quick. Oops. That's not what I wanted to do. I think it would be right here. Pasting it there.
Okay, so now I've made a song and I can learn how to go in here and I can add steps so I can have like a verse and a chorus or whatever. So I'm just kind of showing you guys how you can create instrumentation, what your limitations are with like four voices. Now, if I go into module, if I go to module properties, this is where I can add new songs or I can name songs. So I might call this one song one and now it's name song. I'm gonna add. Now, if I want to create a sound effect, what I need to do is I need to call it SFX under lowercase underscore whatever the sound is so let's call it bash i'm gonna hit okay now i can go back and forth between my songs or my sound effects which i'm gonna make my sound effect just a couple of frames or a couple of rows i should say i'm gonna make it like 16 rows so it's actually much shorter and what i'm gonna do is that that melody thing that i use i'm gonna use that on my noise channel and i'm gonna get this so now I can hit the record button. If, if I'm on my pulse, I get this, right? It's got that volume envelope. I'm gonna put it on my noise channel and I'm gonna get, so let me record that. And now that's the sound of my melody. Now, the, or that's the sound of my uh, sound effect. The problem that I'm gonna have right now is that uh, if I, use that it might over it all of this is always going to overwrite whatever channel the sound is on so if i have a sound effects taking priority over the music that sound is going to happen and the drum won't play there because the, no matter what the game only has these four voices on a standard nest cartridge um so what we got to do is we got to get tricky um and if you if you play games like the legend of zelda especially you'll notice this especially on level nine you hit a certain sound effect and now the music that like one of the voices stops playing for a little while um it's because the sound effect overwrote that what we want to do is we want to give it a stop command right here so one of the ways that we could do this really easily is i can just make an instrument called stop and in here i'm going to choose an empty slot for the volume and I'm just going to make it have one step and it's zero. So it's not going to sound like anything. And then I'm just going to go ahead and make a note right here. Um, just one note. And then now it's got a stop command. So the next note after this that plays in my normal melody, um, that then it's going that's going to be the thing that plays. The other way that I could do that is if I look at my configuration, I can see I've got a note cut and I can set what key I want that to be. So instead of this here, oops, instead of this here, I should be able to hit the number one key on my keyboard and that gives me a note cut command which does the same thing so now let's say i have this project i have a song and i have a sound effect now i can go to file export text and i'm just going to put this right to my desktop and we'll call it bad music and hit save and i'm going to take a look at it real quick um here we go. So this has this is just a text file that's got a basic output uh, a thing for music for the Nest. The Nest doesn't actually read this information. This is family tracker information. We then need some kind of playback engine that can decipher what this all means. So what we have inside Nest Maker is Gradual Games uh, music engine, uh, which is. A really cool little music engine. It, it's it's sort of a small footprint. It does all the bare bones sort of basics that you're going to need for your Nest game. And what what happens when you actually import music is it takes this text file and it puts it into a form that the Gradual Games music engine can understand. So um, so there's other music engines out there. For instance, you could replace all the Gradual Games with Famitone, which is a which is another. Uh, music engine. Famitone is more capable in a lot of ways, but takes up a lot more of a footprint in your ROM. And you need, I think you need more RAM for it as well. So it, it's just sort of a trade-off, like, like you know, what works better for your purposes. And there's a couple other ones out there too. And you could even write your own music playback engine and then figure out a way that you could read this data or convert this data into a form that your engine can understand. Obviously, that's an advanced use, but it's totally possible. You could do any of these things with NestMaker. We're just going to stick with what we got. We're going to stick with um, just using what comes stock with NestMaker. So what I'm going to do, though, instead of importing that one, I'm going to import the one that you guys downloaded with this package. I'm going to go to sound, and you can see right now, no song, empty song, and empty sound effect. I'm going to right-click on sound. Now, I could open Family Studio, by the way. This is what I was talking about here. Um, this is Family Studio. This is, if you're used to looking at... Uh, 
uh, tracker. I should up, update that. Um, if you're looking, used to looking at a tracker like this, if you, your Pro Tools or Logic or something like that, this will look a lot more familiar to you. It's got a piano roll. In fact, uh, Josh and I, who is one of the tool uh, pro programmers for Nestmaker, we're in the process of creating our own version of this. And then we saw this, we're like, well, that's exactly what we wanted to do. Um, so we sort of let them know that, hey, you know, would it be cool if we bundled this with Nestmaker? We're doing like exactly the same thing, except yours is cleaner uh, and it's a slightly better interface. They were totally cool about letting us do it. So we suggest that if you support them, um, you can go to their website, which is linked in our uh, help menu. So if you go to the, if you go to the help menu, uh, da, 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 here you go, it'll come up a second. Um, a lot of people who have contributed. Oh, you know what? It's trying to contact the internet, probably. Um, sorry. So it does have some links uh, right here. You can actually support some of the people that have supported us. A lot of them have Patreons and things like that. Uh, so definitely you know, check out Messin, the emulators, check out Family Studio, and support them if you can. Um, anyway, uh, let's pretend you can make a song on that and export it as an EXE, the, or export it as a text file the same way we just did from Family Tracker. It's just an easier way to look at it if you're used to a tracking type tool. Uh So now I'm going to go back into Family Tracker for a second and disregard my horrible song that I just made and the bad sound effect I just made. Instead, I'm going to file, I'm going to open up, I'm going to go to my Troll Burner Saves Christmas, and I gave you Xmas Music uh, Family Tracker file. So open that up. We're not going to save that. And now I've got a bunch of sound effects that uh, used to come stock with a tutorial and uh, Xmas song, which sounds like this. Sounds like this. Come on, play. Now we've got something that definitely makes us feel a little Christmassy. We've got some sound effects in there too, like a coin. Or one up. Or boom. So we've got a bunch of sound effects that we could grab. Um, and I'm just gonna go to file, export that text. And I'm going to put that somewhere, I'm gonna remember it. Uh, Xmas music text, I'm gonna save it. Now I can go into Nestmaker and I can go into where my sound node right here. I can right click on sound and import Family Tracker text. I'm gonna search for where I put it. I just put it on desktop and I called it Xmas Music. I'm gonna hit open. And what it does is it loads my music. Music, sound effects. All right, so now I can actually play that music in my game very easily. Um, I can go to my overworld let's start with music very simple to set up music I go to my screen info and I look 
on my day, if I'm in my day state, which that's all we've talked about so far, I've got my Xmas song. In fact, all the screens are going to have Xmas song. It's the only song I've loaded right now. But I also could have no song. So I could stop the music there. Um, and that would be one thing I could do. But right now, I'm going to just have it. It'll play my Christmas song now as I'm walking around in my little, uh, little game here. I don't know if you can hear it all that well. It's not very loud, but... Okay. So, works. We've got our own custom music that we created in Family Tracker into the game. Now, let's talk about sound effects. Sound effects are a little bit tricky because every game is going to be different as to where it's going to want to activate sound effects, and every sound effect is going to be different. There's no real way that we can use our GUI, our, our sort of graphic user interface here, in order to tell it when to play the sound effects because it's, it's, it's so dramatically different where they can occur. There, there's so many infinite possibilities of where you might put them. So what we did instead was we created very, very simple macros. I'm gonna show you. If you wanted to play a new song, if I go to define scripts, I can see my macros over here. I've got play song and play sound. If I look at play song, it's got one argument. Guess what argument it is? It wants to know the song to play. So um, if I put song underscore Xmas, it'll play that sound. I'll show you what we have to do with that um, in a second. And the other thing is, if I look at play sound, it wants to, one argument, the sound effect to play. And that could be any of these. So that's all we have to do in order to play a sound. We just have to figure out where in the code we want something to happen and then we can play a sound. So for instance, I've loaded these in. I have a sound called SFX underscore coin. I want to do that when I collect a present. I want this to happen. So when does that happen? When I run into a certain tile type, the prize tile type, right? The prize collect. So if you want to see what I'm talking about, look at your overworld. I have a certain type of tile, my prize pickup, which is tile, which is tile type number six. See that? So what I can do is I can go into script settings. I could go down to tile six, which this was, if I look, this right here was my uh, prize maze based troll pickup. I'm going to edit this. And I want to play a sound. I already have a sound here, but we don't have a sound cursor, I don't think, in here. What I want to play instead was was a uh, coin. So I'm going to, oops, I'm going to play sound, and I have to put this hashtag in front of it. I have to put the pound sign, um, SFX underscore, and then it has to be the name of one of these over here. So I'm going to put coin. I'm going to save that. And this is how we tell it to play a sound. I uncommented it, so it will now play a sound. And I have to put a pound sign or hashtag and then the name of the sound effect exactly as it appears in my list. And I'm going to hit save. And now, when I collect a present, we're going to hear that sound effect play. Now what happens when I run into a monster? I also want a sound effect to play when I run into a monster. And you know what? I want the sound to stop when I run into a monster. So let's try this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to think about where my player runs into a monster. If I go to my script project settings, if I go to my script settings, I can scroll down to where my player gets hurt so player hurt edit so this is where i want to uh play a sound right when i when i lose a life so um when i don't have zero if i have zero lives left it's going to reset the game so it's only going to happen here if i still do have more than zero lives if i still have, have lives left that's what ha that's what's happening here so what i'm going to do is uh i'm going to play a sound here so let's do this, play, sound, and I'll put SFX um, thud, I guess. Let's try that. I'm going to save it. It's got to be listed exactly like it is over here. So whatever this one was, let's try that. So now 
now I get this down. And when I run to the bad guy, it wasn't all that thuddy. Um, let's see what sounds actually sounds sounds good. Uh, boom. Boom sounds pretty good. Ouch. Ouch is probably what I want. Um, ouch or boom. So I'm going to change that just by changing the name. So SFX. Ouch. Let's try that. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the music before I play that sound effect. And again, it's pretty easy because I have a simple built-in macro. Um, I can look and it's stop sound right there. And it doesn't even have any arguments. So I just have to write stop sound and it'll stop all the sounds that are currently playing. You can see it doesn't need any arguments here. So if I go back to my script and right before I play the sound, uh, the sound effect, I stop sound. That'll stop the music from playing and then trigger the sound effect. Save that and test the game. <clears throat> so now I can collect presents. And when I get hurt, the music will stop and it'll play a little out sound effect. When the screen, when the screen reloads, um, it starts the music over again. So that's a really simple introduction as to how I can create music in Family Tracker, how to create sound effects in Family Tracker, import them in using the uh, Gradual Games uh, importer, uh, and then add them to my game with just a simple line of script anywhere you might want to put those sound effects, and use the, the actual screen info uh, in order to add whatever song I want to be in my game. Once you start dealing with night or triggered, especially triggered, you'll be able to change songs depending on the trigger state. So for instance, if you have a town that's destroyed and then you can come back to it and you've saved it, maybe the, the, it's the same screen, but the music and the monsters are different. We'll get to that uh, in one of these last uh, days of Nesmus. Uh, but for right now, uh, just a couple more things to note that not everything in Family Tracker will work with Gradual Game Sound Engine. Gradual Game Sound Engine is kind of bare bones. It's awesome. It's it's a really cool uh, playback uh, for Nest Music, but it does have limitations. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, I would stay away from using effects in Family Tracker. If you get really good at Family Tracker or you know people um, who make music and, and they have really great tracks and you want to see, make sure that they look into the stipulations. If you try and import it and you notice that you're having trouble, make sure that, that uh, they, they're following the, the, uh, the sort of uh, guidelines for making music for Nest Maker games. Um, that, uh, and you can find those in the forum, that or um, you can always import a different sound engine and integrate a different sound engine if you're at that level of advanced use. Uh, and and lastly, again, do not use numbers to start your song names, please. That will break the code and it will think you're trying to do some kind of opcode instead of seeing that as a song name. So make sure you use only alphanumeric characters. Always start with a letter. If you need a space, put an underscore or use camel case instead. Um, hopefully that was super informational about how to add sound, sound and uh, music. Uh, I think that adding sounds and music really starts to make your game feel real, especially when it's music that you created, you know, when it's something that you've built. Uh, that makes the game seem more legit than the silent game. All of a sudden it feels fun to play. You're, you're activating all your senses when you're uh, responding to your input. So um, very cool. I hope that, that helps you guys who are just starting to get into it and wondering, how can I add my own music? How can I add my own sound effects? There you go. There's a really simple lesson. If you want to dive deeper, there are lots of Family Tracker tutorials online. There are lots of Family Studio tutorials tutorials online and there are more uh, making music for nest maker tutorials online as well um, this is just a simple basic getting started let's crank through this um, getting one song in and and uh, I, I hope that helps and I will see you on the 10th day of Nesmus only a few more getting excited Santa's coming